Hello friends, I'm Colonel Failure and this is Motorsport Manager with Bulldozer Power. Uh, the last race was actually pretty good. Um, and I say that uh, seemingly quite frequently this season. Uh, Vanessa Silvera finishing sixth on the uh, track, while Nicholas Hazel managed a pretty good 13th despite a very risky strategy that we put him out on to begin with. The finance is none too shiny, however, uh, as that takes us now below uh, the 3 million mark. With a few races left to go in the season, uh, we might have a little bit of difficulty making that stretch. However, I am expecting, expecting sponsors to turn up anytime soon. Uh, meanwhile, here's the results from the World Motorsport Championship, and uh, it is Reaper 86 who comes away uh, on in top place for Panther Race Team, uh, followed by James Fishburne and P. Shoot. Uh, Fishburne still holding on to the lead. Uh, Johnson couldn't close him down much this time around, uh, with Don in third and uh, Tels Bacorai in fourth in the table. In the series that actually matters, the European Racing Series, it's Hans Double Zero uh, coming away with the win, uh, which gives him a near unassailable 131 points. Well, it's not unassailable in the slightest, but I just don't see him losing that position towards the end of the season. Uh, with Cotso, Massilella in second, and Sarah Thomas in third. Uh, Silvera, a very credible sixth place, gaining 15 points, uh, propelling her up to joint ninth with Trolley Fodder, the Archer BMR driver. Uh, Hazel, 12th overall. Uh, this does good things for the team. Uh, as you can see, we are in fifth, one point clear of Octane Racing. It would be nice to finish in fifth, despite the fact we've only promised the boss that we will finish in ninth or better. I think that uh, there is every reason now to, uh, to be a little bit more confident come the next season. So we'll do a quick tour of the pit crew before we go and turn our attention to the mailbox. And, uh, and Crumpo is, uh, well, he's, he's had enough. He's very tired indeed. Um, have we got someone to replace him with? Uh, Long John's looks a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more healthy than he has done of late, so he can go in. Uh, miss, uh, meanwhile, Mr. Uh, Oyendinma, Oyendinma, Oyedinma, Oyedinma. Okay, one of those, that'll do. Uh, he looks like he's uh, he's up for it, uh, in, the, in the sense that he might actually be able to perform. Um, but I'll be replacing him with Bakera, although, am I? That's the, yeah, I mean, Bakera doesn't have a lot of skills at, well, anything, really. Uh, and has made some errors this season. To be honest, I ought to sack him, but I'm, I'm not in a position to make many staffing changes at the current time. So, uh, Bakera is going in, but is only really weak if I have to fix anything. We're going to gamble that I won't have to fix anything. But I think uh, staffing out the, uh, the pit crew in full is something I'll look to do once I have secured my financial future for this season. Right, it's mailbox time, and uh, Lisa Amorosi uh, tops the timesheets in uh, practice. Yeah, no, she doesn't. No, there you go. There's Gary. Gary's going to say something useful. So once again, Nicholas Hazel has only dropped his car by 25%, basically half as much as Vanessa. Uh, this this means that I should probably think about you know stripping even more weight from Hazel's car when we drive. Uh, but I'll uh, I'll bear that in mind. Uh, meanwhile, Sophie Richards, uh, an interview with Central Sports Network. Let's go for it. Uh, Nicholas Hazel has claimed that your brakes seem to be holding the team back. Uh, again, unaware of the irony in that statement. Uh, the technical commentators seem to agree. Is it true? Uh, I have to hold my hands up. Our brakes are awful. He needs to button it. There we go. Hazel, every time you open your yap, I'm going to close it again. Just... Just be aware of that. Uh, right, and then Gary is saying from the pit crew, our fastest time was 10.87, uh, 3 point, uh, 0 0.035 seconds slower than our season record. One mistake. It's okay. Uh, it was Crumpo made a mistake, but he's very tired. Uh, and Rachel Noy for Channel 6 reports that Hans Double Zero has taken top honours in Guildford uh, with Masselella in second, Thomas in third. I've already covered this. Uh, winning uh, Garuda Racing boss Torsten Tretter collected the team's trophy and looked delighted as he drowned in champagne. That's a, it's not a bad way to go. Okay, so the car is fixed, but more importantly, we have sponsors uh, up in my house. Uh, and uh, we're going to have two to fill this time around, and then another two after the next race. This could properly, properly save my bacon. 
Let's have a look and see what we've got at the first two offers. Target first place, mm, uh, upfront payment of 400 grand. That's what we'll be looking for. Uh, and then a bonus payment of 1.7 million. Well, we're, we're not, uh, not going to take either of those. I want someone a little bit more generous uh, when it comes to uh, not needing me to win the game. Uh, would be absolutely lovely. We've still got slot five available as well. So uh, we'll wait and see what comes in on that front. And here it is right away. We've got uh, we've got one more offer in. Uh, let's have a look here. So uh, Trans Antarctic have come in for second place, offering me 1.4 million. Yeah. So how many races? This is a five race deal. That might be the best one to go for. Actually, 400 grand for five races, two million. Um, no, it's not. That's that's only locking us in for five races. We'll take this one. Uh, we'll take Cupcake. Uh, which are sweet and allegedly delicious. Uh, I've not tried them myself, couldn't tell you for sure, uh, but it's only a little bit of money, but we'll take it. Uh, hopefully, uh, when uh, when slot four opens up, we'll get a nice, big, beefy uh, slice of cash. Uh, meanwhile, all three offers for slot three. Let's have a look. We've got upfront payment of three quarters of a million. Hello there. That sounds like my kind of thing. Uh, with uh, a 1.3 million bonus if I finish in third. Well, I don't think that's going to happen, is it? Um, and that's a six-race deal. We'll take it. That's good. Okay, well, that's an extra million and change in the bank, uh, and that's uh, that's pushed us back over four million in the bank. Good. Okay, I feel a little bit more secure about life now. Uh, and as mentioned, we do get to replace these chaps here next time around, uh, whatever they're called. Gustavo Cruises, and uh, and then uh, FWK, random name uh, at the same time, and they they gave us a million quid up front last time, so uh, I'm pretty optimistic we'll make some money there. Meanwhile, Anna Wardell is talking about the Global Motor Sport Association, and uh, it's uh, voting on whether we should have random grids or not. Okay, huh. It will benefit equality-focused teams, and it won't benefit traditional teams. Um, yeah. Giving equal, everyone a chance of being on pole position. I don't... I, I'm against it, to be honest, because it's unpredictable. Uh, as much as, when my team improves, we're going to be starting further and further back, uh, I, don't, I don't actually mind uh, starting further back. Or do I vote for... Simply on the basis of, you know, change is interesting. You know what? It doesn't... I, I'm, I'm easy going. I'm going to abstain. Uh, I'll keep my voting points. Uh, and the, the others can just decide. Uh, I'm, I'll, I don't mind either way. Whatever it turns out to be. Uh, Harv is against. Martino is in, in favour. Hugo is against. Uh, another abstention. Carmen is for. Mario is against. Vincent is against. It doesn't look like it's going through. Rahul is for. It's rejected. Well, there you go. That's that. Um, grand. Right? No change is the news. Uh, Ernie, put in something that people actually give a damn about next time around, and, and maybe you'll get a little bit more energy in your voting. Now, before we crack on, I'm going to have a quick look at the parts situation, because obviously we've got some development going on. Um, here we go. Right, so... Uh, We've got a gearbox that is on its way up, 10 days before the race, that'll be done. Where are we going next? Tom Della again. Uh, my old nemesis. Uh, we will see if uh, if we can't hold the uh, the tyres together for this one. Uh, I have never driven well at Tom Della, and, uh, and hopefully that, that will all change this time. Tom Della track guide. What happens if we click this? That's Milan. Um, no, that's less useful to us, isn't it? So acceleration is crucial, so we're going to need the gearbox on top form, which is why it is currently being developed. Um, I could possibly get the reliability of the other gearbox up to scratch as well, but I don't think I need to. It looks pretty good already. Um, what else have we got here? Our shady uh, suspension might maybe benefit from... Uh, a bit of a tweak as well. So let's uh, let's balance this out here, like so. That's everything now being done ahead of race day, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll look into maybe just a couple of tweaks before we head out to Portugal. 
So Sophie from Central Sports Network has turned up and apparently uh, Vanessa Silvera is designing a 2018 collection for La Roca. Um, a new name has joined the ranks of renowned Milanese fashion house La Roca and its bulldozer power driver Vanessa Silvera. Uh, the 19-year-old driver was tapped by the company's lead designer, a lot of dinero. Hilarious, hilarious pun on an Italian name there. Uh, after noticing the striking outfits that Silvera wears around the paddock, it's called a driving suit. It's a fireproof racing overall. Uh, it's, it's really not that striking. Um, I'm excited to get involved with uh, La Roca, having some of the most stylish people in the world wear my clothes would be a dream come true, said Silvera, who is a racing driver, not a fashion designer. Uh, but that makes her designing uh, a new fashion line, which gives her 25% extra marketability uh, for 19 weeks, which is uh, very useful. Well, we've finished... Uh and David Fettis has been uh, has been researched. Let's uh, let's go and see what he's made of. Uh, so so is David. He's got got quite long hair. I hope that doesn't uh, it, it decrease his streamlined nature. Uh, Twenty feedback is pretty good. Um, focus is good. Overtaking is good. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's solid. So uh, that's that's nice. Uh, let's go and get someone else into the Scoutertron. Uh, will continue our uh, our quest to understand everybody and it's going to be Dinora Gio uh, Ginofri Ginofri Ginofre that one whichever it is is that though that's the one so the Asia Pacific Super Cup reports back from Rio de Janeiro which is neither in Asia or the Pacific Rim um, and it is H&R on uh, pole position at the end of the race you can call it pole position at the end of the race do you they're taking the first they're taking the top the top step of the uh, the winner's podium uh, with 12 points. Uh, Talila Hawkins second and Jack Onion uh, a rare third place. Uh, Jack Onion, as you can see, is only ninth overall for Kruger Motorsport, but there he is. Uh, this puts uh, Chenar and Hawk within one race's points of each other. Uh, pretty exciting stuff as the Espirit GP and Rosetto Corsa drivers go down to the end of the season as we've got a third of the season left to go so, so really I'm being a bit premature with that uh, we've still got a fair bit of the season to go I'll just, just change up the narrative a little and uh, and as such anything could happen in the final crucial third and I look forward to seeing it flawless so we've had another scouting report come in and uh, I'm going to guess it was, it was, it was Frankie Parks who's awful uh, so we'll get uh, we'll get Eber Lytle into the uh, into the next scouting job, uh, but I've got a lot a lot of email all of a sudden. Uh, I wonder if my spam filters stop working. Uh, Gary's reporting that the reliability work is now done. Uh, Kurt is letting me know that we're in fifth place, as if I didn't know that already. And this is currently better than our target of ninth. Cheers, Kurt. Uh, lovely work. Uh, Gary's saying that nobody's doing any work anymore, given that they've just finished the work. Seems reasonable. Uh, meanwhile, Jonathan Weinstein, big hair and all from Channel 6, uh, is saying that uh, Archer BMR's Peter Young, who's someone I've never heard of, uh, has whispered that he's probably going to retire at the end of the season. Uh, I think he's just looking forward to putting his feet up and spending some time away from the media circus, uh, said a close friend of the driver. Archer BMR boss Carmen Quintana is looking to fill the void that uh, Young leaves as soon as possible, so there may be some driver moves in order soon. Anna's talking about Tom Della. Uh, we're, we have a brief report. It's a 28-lap race. Our lap length is 3.08 miles, and the lap record is 135. So it's not a quick, qu not a quick lap, um, but that's that's all good. 10% chance of rain. Should be fine. Uh, without too many chances for the cars to get up to full speed, this track really favours excellent acceleration. Okay, everybody got that? Uh, Zampelli have the best gearbox, so are expected to perform well. Well, we'll see. Uh, meanwhile, Anna is talking about a helipad. Uh, might seem like a luxury item, but a helipad would be a great boon to our team uh, when we're attempting to sign the best sponsorship deals. Uh, so if we spend a whole lot of money, we could possibly pay for it with the better sponsors that we get turning up. Seems reasonable. I've spoken to representatives of a few top companies. Uh, none of them seem to be willing to touch us with a barge pole unless their CEO, CEO has somewhere to land a chopper. Uh, fine. 
I'm at a car park. Um, anyway, uh, and Sophia has finished uh, scouting Daisy Parker, which is what we just looked at. Oh no, we obviously looked at someone else. Uh, she's the reserve driver right now. She is anything but smooth. Uh, doesn't steer, so she's not smooth and she doesn't go around corners. Well, that would, that would explain why she's a rally champion, I suppose. I mean, uh, they, they corner sideways, if anything. Well, okay, quite a poor driver, but um, arguably quite a lot better than some of the, uh, some of the people on my team. Name me no names. Uh, right, we need to put some of the team back to work here, given that uh, everyone's just kicking around, uh, drinking endless cups of tea and uh, eating all of my Jaffa cakes. Uh, what have we got? Right, brakes. We could up the reliability on the brakes. That certainly wouldn't do us any harm, would it? Uh, the engine is as reliable as they come and virtually topped out on performance. Both gearboxes are maxed out on performance and reliability also looks pretty strong. This is good. Uh, so I think it's going to be suspension. Let's, uh, let's bang both of my shady suspension pieces uh, in and, uh, and see if we can't get them, uh, well, just a little bit more reliable, really. Uh, although, a set of brakes in there as well. There you go. 18 days after the race. We'll edge them all upwards ever so slightly and uh, and see where it gets us. So, following its 11th race of the season in Phoenix, the World Motorsport Championship reports back that Carl Johnson, uh, currently second overall, has once again closed the gap over Fishburne with another first place finish. Uh, Mostly Sane is in second with Misty Saturn in third. Uh, Fishburne himself finishes in fourth place, but that narrows the gap by another five points, uh, leaving not much in it. 14 points between the top two drivers, uh, both, of whom dri both of whom drive for the same team. So uh, so it's, it's slightly academic who comes out on top, uh, but there will be a level of pride between Fishburne and Johnson as to who is the top dog in the top championship. So Arnold Boycott is here with his preview of Tondela. And uh, Hans Double Zero is going into Tondela Grand Prix at the top of the Drivers' Championships. And former driver David McNamara, who can't shut up, isn't expecting that to change this weekend. I can't see Price making up too much ground in Portugal. Double Zero is driving too well. Uh, second place driver Price is uh, hoping to close the gap on Garuda Racing's Hans Double Zero uh, at the top of the European Racing Series, saying it's time to start reeling him in. The 23-year-old added that the thought of beating Double Zero is what gets me up in the morning. I will catch him. Well, if that's what gets you up in the morning, Sunshine, might I suggest an alarm clock? Dragon Race Team China are likely to struggle this weekend, uh, with this being one of the less favourable tracks on the calendar for the China-based outfit. Uh, Tondela is, uh, was never going to be our strongest race of the season, to be honest. It's not going to be easy, said Hong Lao. So it's selector sponsor time. Um, I don't feel good about third place. Uh, we're not there yet, uh, especially given my history uh, on this particular track. It's going to be a 23 degree kind of a day, so maybe not as tire shreddy as last time round, but even so, we should not be complacent when it comes to our tires. Uh, we'll go with a 10th place or better finish uh, for that. Uh, both drivers are content with their setup. Well, um, that's that's unusual. There's so someone's been been feeding happy pills to my drivers. Uh, I can't say I mind that much, but uh, but there it is. Right. Uh, so Silvera's got the better brakes. There are they haven't really improved in in the reliability case, uh, kind of stakes much. Um, uh, engines are correctly appropriate to each car. Uh, the gearbox is good, uh, and the suspension is also set up all right we're golden uh you know everything is as it should be so acceleration we're pretty pretty poor it has to be said uh top speed pretty poor uh the wings are, are slightly better than that obviously because they're spec and their medium speed corners pretty poor so uh i think we're as we're as set up as we're ever likely to be and uh we're gonna head out to the track and I'll see you on the other side of these important messages. <laughs> 